Good morning, everyone. I'm just about, actually, it's afternoon, isn't it? Um, welcome. My name is David Martin, uh, and I'm one of the deputy directors of UK Data Service. And uh, I'm just going to introduce and uh, provide some context for what we're going to be telling you over the next 25 minutes. And in particular, I'd just like to explain that the team uh, who are going to be talking to you are all part of the UK Data Service Census Support Team. And uh, from UKDS, you can gain access to census data from 1961 right through to 2011, which was um, still is the most recent of the censuses to which data are available. And we will be talking to you uh, about the data we've already got and also what's going to be possible uh, with data from the 2021 census. And we're doing this uh, right now because this weekend is census weekend. So the team are all part of the UK data service, but are spread across um, specialist units at a variety of universities. And uh, you see them listed there. And the, we work together to try and ensure that researchers have got ready access to the census data and to provide the most flexible support um, that we can for users of census resources, hopefully in as friendly and intuitive a way as possible. And so today's um, discussion is uh, a part of that process. Very briefly, I want to set the context for the 2021 census that's going on now and the 2022 census in Scotland, which you may have heard a little about. It's, it's important to understand that in the UK, there are actually three separate censuses taking place because the census legislation is devolved in Scotland and Northern Ireland. And they are similar and coordinated, but they're not exactly the same exercise and not exactly the same questions. So these are decennial censuses. Um, there's a statutory duty for people to respond to the census questionnaire. And the data that come from it are an absolutely fundamental source of demographic and economic statistics. They underpin lots and lots of public and private decision making, um, and they're key to providing denominators and insights across a whole range of research. In England and Wales, run by the Office of National Statistics, and in Northern Ireland, run by the Northern Ireland Statistics and Research Agency, Census Day this year is this Sunday, the 21st of March. In Scotland, run by National Records for Scotland, a decision was taken part way back through last year to postpone what was going to be their 21 census to March 2022. And so there will not be a single census date across the UK products for this cycle. And obviously COVID has posed a lot of challenges to the census operation. So there are adaptations to the guidance around the census questions, particularly uh, questions that are going to be hard for people to interpret about travel to work, um, usual place of work, students' places of residence. Um, and there's also modifications to the field operations, the ones that are going on right now, and clearly the delay to the census in Scotland. So we are going to be seeing a census that needs some special interpretation uh, and, and awareness on part of data users in terms of the constraints applied at the time that the 21-22 censuses were in the field. Key features of these censuses that we're doing right now um, Importantly, this is the first time that we've had a, a census operation that's been described by the agencies as digital first, in that the whole system was designed for online completion. And the target is that 75% of the population will complete the census online, uh, usually by receiving an online access code. Some neighbourhoods will still receive paper, but it still has an access code on it. And those paper forms have been targeted to neighbourhoods where um, either internet connectivity is poor or testing has shown that they've got a demographic which is unlikely to respond directly online. But everybody has a chance to go either online or on paper. So it's a mixed mode enumeration. And the actual core question set in these censuses is largely comparable to the question set in 2011. So there should be lots of opportunity to um, do comparisons intersensually from 2011 to 2021. The new forms have got some additional questions. So in England and Wales, there are new questions on gender identity and past service in the armed forces. Those are not present in Northern Ireland. And across England, Wales and Northern Ireland, there's a new question on sexual orientation. 
there's also the, for the first time some explicit linkage of administrative data sources that will actually feed through into the census outputs and in Northern Ireland where they're not asking the question on the census about past service in the armed forces there is going to be an attempt to build a model of that data from administrative sources and then across the piece new administrative data about numbers of rooms and income estimates. So these are data which are being drawn from existing government admin sources, but will be used to help build the census outputs. So important to understand what happens next. The census is in the field right now in England, Wales and in Northern Ireland. The reference date for which people are invited to fill in the forms is the 21st, although many millions of forms have already been returned. And once the enumeration period is complete, and that lasts for about six weeks after census day, all of the paper responses will need to be returned in the post and scanned and merged into the single census database, which is effectively the record of all the responses completed by either channel. Coverage survey will then go out into the field in May and June, which is a carefully stratified sample to understand the extent to which we've reached all the different population groups in all the different local authorities. And then that intelligence comes into the process in order to allow the census agencies to undertake quality assurance of the responses, edit missing and obviously incorrect answers and effectively use the coverage survey to estimate missing persons and missing households. And this is a fairly well established process from the last two censuses. When that's all been completed, there'll be an adjustment of the provisional output area boundaries so that data can be tabulated in a consistent way all the way through the system. And we should start to see outputs available to us from March, 2023. Clearly that's not going to cover Scotland and there won't be any hole in UK outputs. So what's going to happen now is that uh, members of the team are going to talk you through uh, the specific output areas, starting with Dave Ornsley, uh, taking us through the aggregate data overview. Thank you, Dave. Uh, I'm just going to uh, share my screen now. So hopefully you can see that. Um, so um, the aggregate data, um, I guess that's what most people think of as the as the census. So that's counts of people or households um, at a given geographic level. Um, so what do we expect from the National uh, Statistical Institute? Um, so hopefully we'll get some headline figures. Um, the, the NSIs have, have, um, have said that they, will, they plan to have uh, an initial set of uh, census results one year after Census Day uh, and all outputs available within two years. Um, so those those initial um, outputs will be headline figures, and then we'll start to see um, outputs appearing um, slowly um, in the two years after that. Um, both ONS and, and NISRA have um, committed to um, a flexible dissemination system uh, that will allow users to create their own outputs uh, by choosing variables and geographies uh, to suit their needs. Um, this will incorporate um, a form of dynamic disclosure control um, to protect data confidentiality. Uh, and that possibly will be a mix of data blurring, record swapping or data withholding. Um, so we might get to see lots of different populations depending on how that disclosure control uh, works uh, or it may cache a query uh, once it's created and, and reuse that but we'll, uh, we'll wait and see that. Um, there will be a number of predefined tables um, probably similar to um, the 2011's key statistics. Um, the harmonization work on a, um, a UK uh, census will obviously be delayed um, by at least a year. Um, more details um, will be passed on as, as we find uh, out what the, the details are. Um, NISRA are also working with the Central Statistics Office in Ireland uh, to produce, uh, where possible, um, key statistics for the island of Ireland. 
Um, there will also hopefully be um, API access into the um, NSI's um, databases so that um, we can and other people can build interfaces that link directly to the um, to the NSI's data. Um, uh, we've not got any details of that yet, um, but um, we will let you know as soon as we, we find out. So uh, what to expect from us? Um, the first thing we'll do is we'll, we'll do some gap analysis between what um, has been published and what our users um, are most using to identify if there is anything that's falling um, down that gap and, and if we have to build uh, any new tables. Um, we will archive a full copy of all the data from all three NSIs, um, just in case, fingers crossed, not that, that, that in the future um, their websites um, change. Uh, so that we've got we've got access to um, original copies. Um, we will provide bulk access to the uh, to the data via our DCAN interface, um, but we're also building a new interface to the data, um, which will incorporate all the data from seventy one up to twenty twenty one, and that will have API access as well, so that you can also build interfaces on top of that. Uh, we'll also be uh, working on a, a UK data set as well um, that will uh, expand on the um, harmonization work that um, the NSIs are doing. Uh, so we are currently working on two new interfaces. Um, one which we're calling at the moment UK CAS, which will, um, which will unfortunately get rid of CAS web, which has been going since 1998. Uh, it will also do away with Infuse and um, that will provide um, um, an interface to 71 through to 2021. Uh, we're also working on um, a new and improved GeoConvert um, and all of these, uh, both of these interfaces will have um, accessibility built in and API, API access built in. And we're hoping that we'll be able to uh, link from UK CAS straight through to GeoConvert so that you can um, take um, data at census levels, convert it to uh, other geographies, and also add in um, further metadata. Uh, and these, both of these interfaces will be uh, extremely fast and responsive, uh, much more so than uh, Infuse at the moment. Um, I have a couple of very early screenshots um, this is the UK CAS, um, which will you'll be able to um, uh, add in your filters, um, add a location type and an extent, and then you'll be able to see um, outputs on screen uh, before you download them. Um, and GeoConvert, um, we're, we're a little bit behind uh, UK CAS with GeoConvert. Uh, but this is um, an early screenshot. Um, we can add in various metadata groups and we can do some uh, wildcard selections with this now, which we couldn't do with GeoConvert. So you can, you can, for instance, say all postcodes uh, for Manchester or all coast postcodes for LL, etc. cetera. Um, and that's, I think that's all we have for uh, aggregate. So, um, I shall hand you over to, I think it's James next. Is that right? Sorry, o Ollie. Okay, so uh, thanks to Dave for that review of what's happening with aggregate data. I'm going to talk about the flow data, which are another one of the census outputs. They're rather less no, less well known than the, um, the aggregate data. So flow data or origin destination data are data about people moving from one place to another. There's various sets of those that have been produced from the census uh, for several iterations of the census. Those include migration data, which are based on the question where were you living one year ago? Was it the same address as your 
current uh, uh, same as your current address, or was it something different? Um, there's a sub uh, question within that to ask whether or not your address one year ago was a student term time address or a boarding school address, and that's used to generate a separate set of migration data for students. There's a journey to work set of data based on the questions, where do you work and how do you get to work? And there's a set that were introduced for the first time in 2011 for England and Wales uh, about second residences based on the question in the census, do you have an, another address that you stay at for 30 days or more a year? And the, the major categories in that second residence uh, set of data are students with different term time addresses and children who, who have custody shared between two parents. But it also includes things like holiday homes and addresses people have for weekly commuting and so on. Um, we've talked a little bit about the pandemic. The effects of the pandemic are likely to be quite pronounced for origin destination data. So the journey to work data are going to be fairly strongly affected. Obviously, a large number of people are currently working at home. Uh, people have changed their jobs, people are furloughed. So the overall labor market has, has some quite unusual features at the moment. We also know that student term time, term time location is going to be affected. Students are asked to fill in the census uh, in terms of where they should be staying in term time, as long as they still have the contractual right to, to stay wherever they should have been. Um, but we're, we don't know how well that will be uh, captured. And one further area that's gonna be quite unusual in the 2021-22 data are to do with cross-border flows. So where people have moved between Scotland and the rest of the UK, um, there's going to be effects. Some, some people will be captured twice if they've moved from England to Scotland uh, over the coming year. Uh, some people won't be captured at all if they move from Scotland to England. And there's also going to be effects with journey to work about people who live on one side of the Scottish border and work on the other side. But that, we're going to have to deal with that in the interpretation of those data. Plans for what data will be produced are still not final. I'm afraid. Um, uh, Dave mentioned in his previous, uh, in the previous presentation, um, about the use of API and flexible table builders and so on. It's possible that ONS and the other census agencies will develop those for flow data, but we we don't know that that's going to happen. We don't think it's particularly likely. We expect there to be very similar outputs to those produced in 2011. So four sets, migration, workplace, second residence, and students. And as before, they'll be divided by security level. Uh, so the easiest to access will be open data. Safeguarded data is accessible by uh, UK academics and people in um, public sector roles. And uh, the most detailed data will be secure data for which you need to be an accredited researcher and have an approved project. Um, the census agencies have spoken a little bit about that and talked about moving some of the safeguarded data that was produced in 2011 into open or into secure, but we don't know how the extent to which that will happen. In 2011, the origin destination data were published in the period 2014 to 2015. So they were a highly specialized set. They take quite a long time to assemble. As we've heard, the general results should be published in the period from one year to two years after the census. We think the origin destination data will be towards the end of that or possibly a little after as a specialized set, but that will still make them consider considerably earlier than was the case last time. And with Scotland, we expect all of those to be offset by a year. One of the complicating factors is that the flow data are published at a UK level because they contain flows within and between countries in the UK. Our current delivery software is very old, so we're going to move that to a legacy state. And we're going to be creating a new backend API that we'll use for, for data extraction and subsetting. 
for those of you who don't know APIs, they're something that you have to write a program to, to interact with, to, to work with. Uh, that's obviously not for everyone. So we're going to be creating a front end as well for users to create their own queries and uh, interactively extract uh, flow data and download subsets of it. And so that brings me to our next presentation, which is James talking about boundary data, I think. Hi, everyone. Hopefully you can hear me. Um, I'll just put the presentation into um, full mode. Okay, hopefully everyone can see that. Um, hi, uh, James Reed, uh, University of Edinburgh, and I head up the uh, geography part of the census. So why are we interested in uh, geography and what does, role does that play? Well, essentially, the, the, the uh, census is intrinsically geographic. It actually starts with um, addresses, and it's not only in the, uh, the outputs, but the, um, the actual origin of uh, the census starts with geography. So on the screen, you can see some kind of standard statistical reports, all um, geographically based, and on the right, a simple Corpleth map, which is the geographic essence and the boundary data uh, that I'm going to talk about. Digital boundary data, essentially, in the UK uh, is, is quite complex. Uh, those geographic outputs from the center. It's not displaying your um, presentation properly. Is that any better? That's it. Yeah. Good. So as I was saying, the geography of the uh, census in the UK is quite complex. As Dave has already said, we have three different agencies. They use slightly different nomenclature, but essentially it all boils down to we have a hierarchy built around kind of small areas that are aggregated from the individual census and household responses. Those are things called output areas, though in Scotland, um, the higher level geographies have slightly different names. Essentially, they all form a hierarchy. Um, in England and uh, in, in Wales, that is the super output areas, the lower super output areas and the medium output areas. Um, hopefully you see on the screen as the aggregation increases, the number of units uh, decrease. So these are larger areas. These essentially then nest into the, um, the more familiar geographies that uh, people are familiar with, like local authorities. And in the 2011 census, we had things like built up areas and a new geography, which was the workplace zones, which records the, um, the location of the daytime population. Scotland uh, is similar, but again, uses slightly different, different nomenclature. Um, those output areas, as I say, form a, a nested hierarchy in which the geographical outputs, the, the GIS and mapping data, as it were, um, form um, that constellation. On the table there, you can see some of the, uh, the thresholds that we used in the 2011 census. There is some variation in the size of those, those small areas. Uh, the Scottish ones tend to be um, uh, using smaller thresholds. In the 2021 census, there's um, proposals that some of those output areas may make have a UK harmonised uh, output, um, but that's still in discussion. Um, so in terms of what the uh, UK data service provides, we have a, a suite of online tools, some of which already been mentioned. They essentially allow you access to all those geographic boundaries for all the three countries um, dating back to, to 1971. And you can drill into those geographies and drill down to a single output area or uh, an aggregate of those. There are variations to some of those uh, geographic products, which is sometimes confused uh, lay users. There are essentially um, two core variants. One is a clipped version of the boundaries that don't extend to the uh, what's known as the extent of the realm, which is essentially the mean um, high water, uh, mean low water uh, spring, uh, which is used in administrative contexts. And actually, if you look at the map on the, the bottom of the screen, you'll see the clipped and the mapped uh, versions look slightly different. And most people would go, be more familiar with the kind of clipped versions of, of the, uh, the products. There's another version, uh, which is a kind of generalized version of the same boundary set, but essentially we throw away a significant proportion of the pop of the, um, the information in those boundary files to reduce both the boundary file size and reduce the complexity of the boundaries. 
um, there are generalized and super generalized versions of each of the boundaries. And they're slightly different uh, for application use. For mapping, the generalized versions are probably fine for most things, but for detailed analysis and statistical work, it's probably best to use the, the high resolution variants. So coming to the 2021 plans, um, those versions of the, the boundaries I've spoken about, the output areas, the, the nested lower and super output areas, uh, the census agencies have already um, agreed that that's what they'll be providing. So you'll see in that table, we have, we're going to have super and um, generalized versions and clip versions of the existing kind of 2020, 2011 variants. ONS have also said they will be producing exactly the same sorts of uh, geographies they did in 2011, uh, area classifications, built up areas, and the workplace zones. And one new departure potentially is the, uh, the generation of one kilometer grid square product. Um, all of these products will be on, released under open government license. So it's broadly more of the same. The slight uh, variation there is possibly Northern Ireland may have a dual geography. They had an administrative um, update to their boundaries in 2015, which makes backward compatibility to the 2011 slightly problematic. So they may produce outputs to the new administrative and to some of the older ones. How they're going to do that, again, remains to be seen. Okay. Um, I will now hand you over, hopefully, to Rehab, who will say something about the census microdata. Uh, th thanks, uh, James. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Rehab Dahab. Uh, uh, I work in the UK data service. Uh, I'm based in Manchester, and uh, I lead the census microdata team. Um, so... Uh, What's, uh, what are uh, census microdata? They are samples of uh, census records. Uh, this type of uh, data are very flexible. Uh, they have uh, a lot of uh, socioeconomic details, uh, but uh, the data are anonymized to protect uh, the confidentiality of the uh, census respondents. Uh, so why we use them? Uh, as I have just said, uh, census microdata are flexible. Uh, they have large sample size, so you can uh, combine different variables uh, to uh, make uh, new data from them. Uh, they allow you uh, to create uh, subsamples. Uh, you can also perform different types of uh, statistical uh, analysis, uh, for example, uh, regression or uh, multivariate uh, analysis. Uh, you can also run uh, multi-level uh, modeling uh, with them. Uh, and because the data were uh, collected in different years, uh, you can study changes over time using uh, census microdata. Uh, but uh, because they are sample uh, data, uh, we should keep in mind that uh, the results uh, will be estimates. Uh, also, this uh, data do not have um, geographical uh, detail because they have socioeconomic uh, detail. So uh, again, this is uh, for uh, confidentiality uh, reasons. Uh, here we have a list of some of uh, the most important topics uh, of uh, census microdata that um, uh, will be in the 2021-22 uh, uh, census. Uh, there's no need to go through it in detail, just to say uh, that uh, they will be similar to the topics uh, that we have uh, in uh, the two, uh, 2011 census, but uh, with a slight change. Uh, as they've uh, mentioned earlier, uh, there uh, will be new questions uh, in the new census. Uh, these are uh, the ones uh, in green color. And uh, in red, uh, this is uh, a question that uh, would not uh, be asked in the new census. Uh, but uh, as uh, they've said, uh, users uh, can uh, still have uh, information about the number of rooms uh, from existing uh, government uh, data. Um, and uh, in black, these are the questions uh, that uh, were asked in the previous uh, census and will also be in the uh, new census. Uh, currently, um, we have microdata from uh, 1961 to uh, 2011 uh, uh, census. Uh, for 2021 census, we are uh, aiming to have microdata files uh, similar uh, uh, to the uh, one in uh, 2011 census. 
Uh, at the moment, we have uh, these files at uh, three levels uh, of access. Uh, we have the teaching files, uh, and uh, they are based on 1% sample of individuals. Uh, we also have the safeguarded files. Uh, they are larger, uh, so we have uh, the regional and uh, local authority samples, and both uh, are based on 5% uh, sample of individuals. Uh, we have the secure files uh, for England and Wales. Uh, there are individual and household uh, control files. Uh, these uh, files are um, uh, the largest. They, are, uh, they have more detail. Each file is based on 10% uh, uh, sample. Um, another new thing that we hope to get uh, from 2021-22 uh, uh, census is a safeguarded household file. Um, uh, at the moment, o, uh, ONS are working to create uh, this uh, file, uh, which was uh, not available from the previous uh, census. Um, of course, we are uh, urging ONS to create uh, such file, but uh, for now, unfortunately, we cannot promise uh, much in, uh, in detail. Uh, but at this uh, stage, this is a good news uh, that uh, they are uh, considering it. Uh, okay, uh, this is my final slide. So uh, we we receive the new uh, since uh, when we receive uh, the um, uh, new census uh, products, uh, we are planning to continue providing uh, online access to census microdata through uh, our on, uh, our uh, online data exploration tool uh, Nestor. Our users uh, can also access the data from uh, the um, data catalog on our website. Uh, we expect to have uh, a busy help desk uh, when the census outputs uh, are released. So uh, we will uh, be doing our best to answer all users' uh, queries. Uh, we will also provide documentation on the website to support our users and uh, we will uh, certainly update our uh, training materials and we'll hold um, uh, event um, using the new uh, census um, uh, data. Um, before I uh, uh, hand this to Jill, I just uh, want to mention quickly that uh, uh, we have a new website uh, which uh, will be launched uh, soon. It will have a new look. Um, uh, it should be easier to navigate and it will uh, integrate census uh, data and material. So our new website will not have a separate uh, census site like the current uh, uh, website. 